In 9.1, we are going to be talking about how DNA is manipulated. And really, before I get to that, we're going to talk about how uh, biotechnology was done before we had chemicals and things like that to do it. Um, what was done in the past was you would end up doing what's known as selective breeding and hybridization. You would take uh, two organisms and be like, oh, I like the traits of this animal and I like the traits of this animal. And you'd cross the the two of the same species and hope that you get the traits that you liked. And if you did, you kept breeding them and you would do inbreeding for that animal to get the that tra those traits to continue to show up. And so you would do this process over and over again until you would come up with uh, every time you'd have that organism breed it would produce the traits that you you desired so that was how uh, biotechnology was sort of done at that point in time um, and we'll do an activity like that in in class uh, dealing with dog breeding so uh, now we'll move on to how we manipulate DNA nowadays so scientists use several techniques to manipulate DNA you can use chemicals, computers, bacteria. They're all used to work with DNA. Scientists use these tools in genetic research and biotechnology. One thing that we use is restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes are enzymes that cut DNA at particular spots. They are uh, what are known as molecular scissors. Uh, they were discovered because of Bacteria use them to fight off viruses. So viruses would infect. The bacteria had these enzymes that would go and chop up the viral DNA so it wouldn't end up getting sick. So it comes from, like I said, various types of bacteria and allows scientists to, to more easily study and manipulate genes so you can chop them down into more manageable sizes. So cutting DNA at specific nucleotide sequence that is called a restriction site. So there are different restriction enzymes cut DNA in different ways. Each enzyme has a different restriction site. So you can see right here, restriction site one, it would cut in those spots. Two, it would cut at those different spots. So uh, we will again be doing a lab where you're gonna be using uh, it's it's paper lab, but you're going to be seeing where the restriction enzyme would cut and what sequence in the DNA it would, and you'd be drawing lines showing where it would actually cut. Some cut straight, leaving what are known as blunt ends. Others make staggered cuts, which leave an overhang, and those overhanging ends are called sticky ends because they're like the sticky side of tape. They want to uh, attach to something and, and join up. So uh, that right here is showing you the the sticky ends there. So restriction maps show the length of DNA fragments. We will use what are known as gel electrophoresis to separate DNA fragments by size. So gel electrophoresis is almost like a, a, a jello type of a thing that you put in a tank of water and you put electricity through it and you'll put the DNA fragments into that gel and the electricity will cause the DNA fragments to move through that gel. The smaller they are, the farther they move. So the DNA sample is cut with the restriction enzyme. Electrical current pulls the DNA fragment through the gel. Smaller fragments move faster and travel farther than large fragments. Fragments of different size appear as bands that's what you see in that picture right there. A restriction map shows the length of the DNA fragments between those restriction sites. Only, uh, it only indicates size, not DNA sequence. It's useful in genetic engineering and used to study uh, mutations. So you'd be able to know here's the size fragment that we have and you'd be able to see all the different fragment lengths in that uh, that piece of DNA. 
So that is the end of the notes for section one.